It's Tuesday. It's time for our e-blast. I'm glad you could join us. Pastor Joe here. Uh, take a few minutes of your time and give you a few updates, let you know what's going on. Had an elders meeting last night with our elders, and it was a great time in the Lord. We celebrated uh, what the Lord has been doing in our midst and uh, overviewed where we've been the last year and how we've begun to rebuild and reconstruct through the COVID crisis, how we fared through the whole process. I really believe that uh, through prayer and uh, guidance and good counsel. Uh, we came through it much better than a, a lot of our sister churches did, but we give the glory to God and we thank him for giving us the kind of wisdom we needed. At the same time, we've all noticed how in the culture around us, there seems to be this disintegration that's taking place. I, I mean, the last couple of days, counting this morning, I've received several texts and emails from friends or from other ministries that have talked about uh, what is going on in the world today. I mean, the, the confusion that's out there, uh, the r rampant Ignorance, perhaps, is a better word to use that's out there today of people just uh, undermining, destroying, neglecting, rejecting the biblical moral standards of decency in our culture, uh, all the confusion that's, that, that's happening in, in political terms, in media terms. Uh, I think uh, we haven't ever seen a time like this in history. And I, I went through a list the other day of, of the things I couldn't believe. And we'll talk about that in a sermon in the future of what's going on. 6% uh, of Christians, Barna says, and we know he's a, 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 a polling agency, a Christian polling. He said only 6% Christians now hold to a biblical worldview. 88% of Christians now bar from contradictory worldviews for their beliefs. In other words, they take left off what the Bible has to teach and what the scriptural principles are of the Word of God and begin to embrace, embrace other principles that are not necessarily, well, they just aren't of God. They're worldly principles, they're, they're phil philosophical approaches to how we should live our life, and they're not biblical approaches. 6%, 88% have just departed. We see that, I, I, I get text and pop-ups and, and uh, all the time from people who, who said, you know, that so-and-so has left the faith or so-and-so has denounced the Christian faith and they've gone off to some other, embraced something else. And listen, this is the age of apostasy. That's what the Bible said. We shouldn't be surprised at what's going on. If we know the Bible, we know that the Bible says in the end times, these certain things will happen and at an escalated rate. I mean, all those things have always taken place, wars, rumors of wars, you know, crisis in culture, but never before at a, at, at a rate, you know, as this exponential kind of unfolding of things, of chaos happens, have we seen in the world like we are seeing at this present time. And uh, everybody seems to be grasping onto different things and moving their ministry towards other things and becoming focused on things. I really believe that we've, we've gotten off the majors. And the majors are simple. And this is, this is from my heart to our church and to anybody else who follows our e-blast who may not be a member of our fellowship. But just give me just a couple of minutes here. I think we must return to keeping the major things of, of God's will and word, the major things in our life. And all too often, we get sidetracked, if not backslidden, but obviously sidetracked and dealing with minor issues. And there are many things the Lord, is a Christian, that we, we should do, we should act, we should say, we should unite. All those things are part of our Christian faith and life. But those are not the major. In fact, if I do what I'm supposed to be doing, the major things, then all the minor things start lining up. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when the Lord says, you know, seek me first and all these things will be added unto you, the food, the shelter. In other words, you get, get your priorities right, then things follow. But when we move our priorities and make those things that follow the priorities, then we're certainly going to miss the will of God in our heart and in our life. What, what is the major thing? Well, I think it's, you know, we, we call them uh, in Scripture, there's, there's two phrases we've given these verses. One is called the Great Commission and one's called the Great Commandment. The major thing Jesus says is the Great Commandment. And he said, if you just keep this great commandment, you will have fulfilled all the requirements of the law. That's a pretty astounding statement. You'll, you'll fulfill all? What is it? You love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, strength. That's everything. You just surrender to him, love him. And two, you love your neighbors yourself. You love God and you love people. <laughs> That's 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 majoring on the majors right there. I mean, are you doing that? Is that the major in your life? That I'm loving God with my heart, mind, soul, mind, and I'm loving other people. You see how the other things begin to follow? If we, we can address the issues and the crisis and the social distractions, if we just stick with the, with the major thing. The second major thing is, we call it the Great Commission. Jesus' departing words to the church, 
to all disciples of all generations. It applies to every Christian, no matter who you are, where you are in the world today. It is this, that you go and make disciples. Boom, there it is. Okay, I'm simple. What's God, what was the Lord requiring me? Well, Micah says you walk humbly with your God. You know, you love justice. But th that all comes into those, those things. I'll, re I'll fulfill all the law by loving God. And then obviously my mission in life, my motivation is to love God. My ministry falls, falls out of that. My, uh, and I do what God's called me to do. So I want to encourage you today to take a, a moment. Get yourself alone with the Lord and ask yourself. Do a little personal inventory. Do I really love God today with all my heart, my mind, my soul, my body, my strength? Or is he just there and I call on him as I need him? I recognize him. I love him. But where's the relationship? Where's the fellowship? Number two, uh, God has me in this world for a reason. And he has you here for a reason. Somebody out there today or this week uh, needs to hear from you. They need to be reminded that God loves them. They need to be reminded that Jesus died for them and rose from the dead for them and reminded that he is coming again. And no matter how difficult the days may get around us and how critical it might seem, God is still sovereign and he's still on the throne and he's still in control. Let's remember that. There's been so much fear and so many distractions in this last uh, year and leading into this year. Uh, don't, get, don't get derailed. Stay true, stay on mark, love God, love people, and choose to be a part of the ministry that God's called us to, to reach the world. I love you. That's what this church is about. That's what I'm about. That's what your staff is about. Your leadership in your church is about. Uh, and we're going to continue moving that direction. And yeah, the days will get darker and darker, but we're going to shine brighter and brighter because, hey, the darker the night, the brighter the light. So let's shine today. See whose life God has you to shine in today. Be sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I love you. I'm looking forward to Sunday. Don't miss it. It's going to be awesome. God bless you.